You see this group of stars just behind me? They make up the constellation Orion. Those three stars right there, that's Orion's belt. And you might've already known that, but in this video, we're gonna take a peek at something amazing that's just below his belt. <laughs> That region of space is called the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula looks pretty cool when you see it through a telescope, but with a camera, you can see way more detail. So that's why I'm gonna point my camera and telescope at that region of space for 10 seconds, 10 minutes, all the way up to 10 hours, so we can see what kind of detail is hiding in that region of space. When it comes to space photography, there's a lot of challenges that need to be overcome, and we'll talk about those. But first, let's take a look at that 10 second photo inside because it's really cold out here. Here, we can already see some great detail in this famous nebula. And keep in mind, this is only a 10 second image. There's way more detail hiding in the shadows of this nebula that are only gonna show up when I shoot for longer. Now, you can probably already tell this is a black and white photo. So what does Orion look like when it's in color? And how can I even get a color image using a black and white camera like this? Well, you're probably already used to normal color cameras, like the ones on your phone, for example. You point and shoot, boom, you get a color image. Those actually have black and white sensors in them as well. But the difference is there is a color filter that sits in front of that black and white sensor. And then it has built in software that will combine all of those colors together to give you the color image you see on your screen. While I could choose to shoot deep space with a color camera, Camera, doing so comes at a cost. Your phone and DSLR cameras have what's called a Bayer filter in front of that black and white sensor. But if you look closely at it, you'll notice something interesting. There are twice as many green filters as there are blue or red. Because our eyes are more sensitive to green light, having more green pixels means images will look more natural. That's helpful when you're taking pictures of things here on Earth. But we're not here to photograph flowers or people. We're here to photograph the cosmos. So if we shoot space with a color camera, it means half of the sensor is pretty much wasted. For example, if a red photon hits the green filter that's in front of the sensor, it'll get rejected and your sensor won't read it, meaning you won't capture that light. Since 50% of the Bayer filter is green, there's a high chance of rejecting a lot of light. And with astronomy, every single photon counts. That's why using a black and white camera is better. It lets me choose what filter I wanna use, and that lets more light in for that specific color, which means I'm gonna get better results. Let's look at that first image of Orion again and turn it into a color photo. This 10 second photo we looked at may be black and white, but everything you see here is the natural blue color from the universe. And that's because I had a blue filter in front of my sensor. So to turn this into a color image, I'll take a 10 second photo, but instead I'll use a red filter and then I'll do it again with a green filter. And when I combine those red, green and blue results, I get this color image. Here, we're already starting to see some beautiful textures. With just 30 seconds of total exposure, the colors are already apparent, which means the longer I shoot, the more prominent these colors will become. Remember, these are the natural colors of Orion, no fake color added in here. If I took a photo of Orion with a normal camera, like my Sony, for example, you'll see that the colors are very much real. By the way, if you're curious about what I'm using to take these photos, I'm using a 417 millimeter telescope, a dedicated astronomy camera, and a tracking mount to follow the stars. And it's all controlled from a computer. As an astrophotographer, I travel to some really remote places in the world to capture the stars. But when I'm on the road, I still need access to a secure internet connection. And I can do that thanks to Private Internet Access, the sponsor of today's video. Private Internet Access is a VPN, which means it protects your data by encrypting your connection. This is perfect if you're traveling to dark skies and you need to connect to public Wi-Fi like at an airport or a hotel. It hides your IP address and shields your online activity, sensitive information, and even your passwords from hackers who could be on the same Wi-Fi network. Plus, it allows you to access content that might not be available in the country you're in. Just like how city lights block your view of the stars, local restrictions block access to content. Services like Netflix have different shows and movies available depending on what country you're in. For me, I've been watching the show Landman on Paramount+. Plus. But if I'm doing astro traveling overseas in New Zealand, I can't get access to my account. But with private internet access, I can simply switch my geolocation and boom, I can get back to watching. It works on all of your devices. And right now, if you go to piavpn.com slash ianlauerastro, you can get 83% off, which is just $2.03 a month. Plus you get four extra months free. 
And if you're not sure, it's risk-free because they give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. All right, so I showed you what a 30-second image of Orion looks like, but I wanna bump those numbers up. So instead of taking 10-second images through each individual filter, I'm gonna take one-minute images through each individual filter and combine them together. Take a look at the contrast between the hot, bright, glowing gases and the cold, darker clumps of dust. They become way more apparent when we compare our three minute image to the 30 second image. What a big improvement in image quality, all from capturing light for two and a half minutes more. This three minute result is showing us some beautiful features in this part of the sky, and we haven't even done a 10 hour photo yet, but there's something in these images that you might've already noticed that will become a big problem as I start to shoot for longer. You see, stars, nebulas, and galaxies are extremely far away. In the case of the Orion Nebula, it's 1500 light years away, or roughly 90 quadrillion miles. And while everything in the universe is in constant motion, these extreme distances mean we can't see things moving in real time. But there are some things that we see moving in our pictures, and these things are way closer than distant stars and galaxies. This photo here is about 10 minutes of total exposure time, made up from stacking multiple images from the red, green, and blue filters. These right here, these streaks are what I'm talking about. They aren't caused by distant stars or galaxies. These are satellites streaking across my field of view. So why are there so many satellites in my image? It all comes down to where Orion sits in the sky, right behind a satellite highway. You see, Earth is surrounded by over 13,000 satellites, not to mention the countless pieces of space debris. And while I won't dive into the chaos of space junk today, many satellites travel within orbital highways. One of these highways is directly above the Earth's equator, which unfortunately for astronomers means this highway cuts directly through our view of the Orion Nebula. Now you might think, this is all Starlink's fault, right? But is it? Take a look at this time-lapse of Orion. Almost everything you see moving here is a satellite, except for this meteor here, which is really awesome that I caught that. It's easy to see where one of these highways are, right near the Orion Nebula. This highway is called a geostationary orbit, and most satellites on that highway are communication and weather satellites, not Starlink. But what about all the other streaks that are going in different directions? Are those Starlink satellites? Well, many of those are GPS satellites or space debris that are in a mid-Earth orbit. I know these aren't Starlink satellites because they sit in what's called low Earth orbit, meaning they would appear to move way faster in the time lapse, so fast that they would look like this, a long streak in a single frame of a short exposure. Now, I'm not saying that Starlink isn't a problem. I'm just saying that all of the satellites we're seeing cut through the images here are not Starlink satellites, they're other types. So here's where we left off, with our image totaling 10 minutes of total exposure time. We're already seeing tons of streaks, but let's see what happens when we increase that number to 30 minutes. First, let's take a moment to appreciate some of the detail we're seeing here. All of a sudden, the dust that surrounds the nebula becomes much more prominent in the photo, but going after that detail comes at a cost. The longer exposures means more satellites are streaking through my photo, photobombing it, and blocking the view of the nebula and all of that structure. And if we're seeing this many satellites in just 30 minutes, how am I ever gonna get a good photo of Orion when I do 10 hours? These satellites cause lots of issues for people who study the sky, but for astrophotographers, we actually have a way we can deal with this issue. First, let me show you how many satellites appear in a one hour photo. This final image you're seeing here is made up of 60 individual one minute frames stacked together. To understand how astrophotographers deal with satellite streaks, let's quickly break down the process of creating this image. The one hour photo is built from three master images. Each of these is created by 20 individual frames through a specific color filter, then combined together. Now, before I perform this step where I create the master images, there's something I can do to minimize the impact of those satellites. And let me show you how it works. Imagine this final image is made by stacking a bunch of individual photos, which will be represented by these clear sleeves here. Let's say one of those photos has a satellite streaking in front of a star. I wanna remove the satellite from my final image, but I don't wanna get rid of that individual photo. It's got lots of important details that I wanna keep. So to do that, all I have to do is go to that single photo and remove just the small section where the satellite appears. Then when I go back and stack all the photos together again, you'll see that everything stays the same, except the streak is now gone, leaving us with a photo free of satellites. 
Now, that's just a really simple example. In reality, astrophotographers are taking dozens, hundreds, or even in some cases, thousands of photos. And going through every single individual frame, looking for every single satellite would take forever. Luckily, there's software that will do this process for us automatically. This means I can now go from a one hour photo full of satellites to a one hour photo free from all of those streaks, revealing features that would otherwise be blocked from our view. Our 30 minute image gave us a glimpse of what was hiding around the nebula, but with one hour, we get a much better view. What seemed to be empty space in the 30 minute image comes to life in the one hour exposure, revealing just how far those faint cold tendrils of dust extend from the core of the Orion Nebula. Now that we don't have to worry about satellites ruining our photos, we can shoot for as long as we want. So what happens when we push beyond the one hour? What happens when we photograph Orion for 10 hours? Well, after many nights of collecting data, endless frames and lots of processing time, I photographed the Orion Nebula for 10 hours. And let me show you what that looks like. We started out with a 10 second photo. And while it might feel like it didn't reveal a lot, that photo has already showed us more than what the greatest astronomers in history could ever see, even with their biggest telescopes. But thanks to modern technology, we can see so much more. The Orion Nebula is a stellar nursery, a vast region where thousands of stars have already formed, with many more to come. At its heart is the Trapezium Cluster, a group of young, massive stars blasting out intense radiation that pushes around the glowing clouds of hot gas and dust, sculpting the nebula into the shapes that we see. What appeared to be empty space in the 30 second image is now clearly visible in the 10 hour photo. Cold, dense clouds of interstellar dust. These dark filaments are slowly being eroded and pushed outward by the radiation from newborn stars destined to dissipate in the vast emptiness of space. In the short exposure, Orion's companion nebula hinted that there was more to be seen. With 10 hours, we can now see all of the beauty it has to offer. For me, capturing the Orion Nebula isn't just about taking pretty pictures of space. It's about seeing what's really out there in the cosmos. You see, the universe isn't just a realm of physics, mathematics, and chemistry. It's a living work of art filled with secrets waiting to be discovered by anyone willing to look long enough.